Hello and welcome, Pastor John here, and I want to welcome you here to our ongoing series, Going Through the Bible, and uh, today we're going to be looking at the second book of Kings, and uh, last time we did the first book of Kings, today the second book of Kings, and we're going to be reading chapter 5, verses 1 to 19. So that's second Kings, open your Bible. Please open your Bible and go to 2 Kings, chapter 5, uh, verses 1 to 19. 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 19. So here we read. The king of Aram had great ap admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him... The Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. At this time, Aramean raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day, the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman told the king what the young girl from Israel had said. Go and visit the prophet, the king of Aram told him. I will send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. So Naaman started out, carrying as gifts 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter to the king of Israel said, with this letter, I present my servant Naaman. I want you to heal him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, Am I God that I can give life and take it away? Why is this man asking me to heal someone with leprosy? I can see that he's just trying to pick a fight with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, Heard that the king of Israel torn his clothes in dismay, he sent this message to him. Why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me, and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. So Naaman went, Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger out to meet him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. But Naaman became angry and stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus the Abana and the Farpar are better than any of the rivers of Israel. Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned away. So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply, Go and wash and be cured. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child, and he was healed. Then Naaman and his entire party went back to find the man of God. They stood before him and Naaman said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept any gifts. And though Naaman urged him to take the gift, Elisha refused. Then Naaman said, All right, but please allow me to load two of my mules with earth from this place and I will take it back home with me. From now on, 
I will never again offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other God except the Lord. However, may the Lord pardon me in this one thing. When my master, the king, goes into the temple of the god Rimon to worship there and leans on my arm, may the Lord pardon me when I bow too. Go in peace, Elisha said. So Naaman started home again. God bless the video of his word. Trust in God. Trust in God. Oh, wow. This is an amazing um, uh, event that is recorded here in the Old Testament. And I, I it is one of my favorites. Uh, my, you know, I don't know, top five, top ten, I don't know. It's one of my favorite events as it was recorded in the Old Testament. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this so uh, this one too. Reread it. I encourage you to reread what happens here. And so, uh, yeah, so let's dive in. Let's take a little look here what uh, what all of this is about. So, here's a little bit of background. So we're now in the second book of Kings. And uh, second Kings begins with the ministries of Elijah and Elisha. So during the reigns of Ahaziah and Joram. So uh, basically, uh, first and second Kings cover the range from King David's death. Um, 970 BC to the Babylonian exile of Judah uh, in 586 BC. So what's happening here? Uh, Aram, so as the passage we read, Aram today, which is today is Syria, is in an ongoing conflict and fighting with Israel. We see that in verses 2 and 7. In this passage in chapter 5, um, so that's the um, part where we have the, um, um, we just read this part, we just began in chapter 5, but what happens early is Elijah has been taken up into a whirlwind. So this is, a, this is an amazing event, this is just a side note, but read Second Kings chapters 2 to 4. Uh, Second Kings chapters 2 to 4, where Elijah... That is the uh, uh, teacher and mentor of Elijah is taking up in the, whirl in the whirlwind and Elisha succeeds him. So that's an amazing event. Also something you just don't want to miss um, while you're there in 2 Kings. Um, awesome. So uh, Elisha uh, later then anoints Jehu as king of Israel. So, however, Elisha, as it goes, he's... On, mentioned on and off in the book of Second Kings, um, he has to deal with uh, other evil kings, so and evil people, uh, which are basically King Ahab's associates. So, um, yeah. So the context here is that we have Naaman, and he's an esteemed um, Aramean warrior, uh, the commander of the army of the king of Aram, and uh, well, he seeks out the prophet Elijah. Elisha's help, not Elijah, Elisha's help to be healed from his leprosy. So the topic here is, will Naaman trust in God? Are we trusting in God? So let us look at the verses here. In verse 4. This is basically where Naaman's journey of faith begins. Right? There's a move uh, that he um, believes or he has if you want to say an opinion that um, God, um, the God of Israel, um, is able to do something about his leprosy. If he didn't, he wouldn't have bothered and not, you know, gone to all the um, um, challenges, uh, talking to his boss, so to say, and so on. But he does, right? And so um, the, um, as the events unfold, um, he ends up in in uh, in the uh, vicinity of the prophet, that is um, Elisha. But in verse eleven, if you read verse eleven, uh, he almost misses God, our Lord God. He's angry. Right? There's a struggle there going on in Naaman, right? As a pagan, um, 
uh, and just it's a struggle between belief and disbelief. So uh, he's we see here that he's reluctant and also also prideful. However, as he visits Elisha, right, he he does obey. He does obey uh, Elisha's instruction uh, instructions, but he does so reluctantly, right? So it's. Something where he's, he's angry and his advisors even have to say, hey, let, at least give it a try, right? Don't walk away in anger. And so thank, thankfully, uh, Naaman listens. And in verse 14, um, he's healed, but not in the way he expects. So what happens here then is there's a change of heart and Naaman is humbled. He's humbled. There's a repentant heart that we can clearly see here. And uh, not just that, but uh, um, Naaman acknowledges, as we read in verse 15, uh, it says, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So at that moment, he believes in God, uh, becomes a God-fearing um, you know, believer, and um, that is just so astonishing, that transformation. So um, then, though, as we read onwards in verse 17, 19, uh, we see the extent to which he, he believes and also um, his, his God-fearing uh, transformation. So we read, we read it, I'll read again, verses 17 to 19. Then Naaman said, All right, but please allow me to load two of my mules with earth from this place and I will take it back home with me. From now on, I will never again offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other god except the Lord. However, may the Lord pardon me in this one thing. When my master, the king, goes into the temple of the god Rimon to worship there and leans on my arm, may the Lord pardon me when I bow too. Go in peace, Elisha said. So Naaman started home again. God bless him as word. It's a very heartwarming and encouraging moment. And uh, it's an example of a, um, uh, not just a conversion, like, uh, you know, from unbeliever to believer, but also an example of a non-Jewish person here, a Gentile, Naaman, um, being included in God's plan of salvation. So uh, when we look at the New Testament, we see this manifested and expressed through Jesus Christ. So if, if you look at Luke chapter 24, verse 47, we read, It was also written that this message will be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations. Beginning in Jerusalem, there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. God bless me with word. What an amazing testimony and example here of God's grace and mercy to all mankind and anyone who will turn to God. Right? So it's, it's, it's an amazing event here, um, Naaman's uh, conversion and um, God's grace and mercy um, shown through the prophet Elisha to him. All right. So back to our initial question, what does it mean for you to trust in God? Like Naaman, what does it mean for you to trust in God? It means to move beyond what we can see in our own limited way as people, human beings, to what God sees here. from uh, Basically from seeking to believing that means um, a repentant heart and um, trusting um, God Almighty and having faith in God. Jesus reminds us here in Luke 17, verse 6. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. The Lord answered, If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, May you be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. God bless you, us words. So that's our Lord's words. Um, so just a mustard seed is like the smallest tiny seed that's available um, among the many seeds that there are. And uh, so just a little bit of faith, faith is needed. And that was uh, what happened to Naaman. So it also means for us to turn from false gods. 
and are those gods with small g uh, who are no gods at all, right? To the one true God, there is only one true God, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the Apostle Peter reminds us of this in 1 Peter 4, verse 3, 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 3. You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. So that's something to consider here too. And also our call is to trust God fully. Why? Well, in Proverbs uh, 3, 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. God bless you of his word. So, summing all of this up, we, we ask, are we trusting God? Are you trusting God? Or something? Or someone else? Right? There's a warning here that we want to consider. The Apostle Paul warns us in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. So I'm going to read this slowly. Um, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. God bless you of this word. So may we heed God's word and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you.